So we are at Catesby Tunnel, formerly the longest underground railway tunnel in the country. Quite an unusual space, 2.7 kilometres in length, almost perfectly flat and perfectly straight. So we've come here today with the Focus Touring Car to do a little bit of uh, sort of straight line testing, uh, aerodynamic testing, and to see if this uh, kind of environment can uh, give us a bit of an edge on the competition. You know, today using Ashy's car, it just so happens that Ashy's was the one that was set up to have the equipment on. Obviously, it's got a, a big weekend ahead at Silverstone, so I need to take care of it. A few places certainly around the country where you can test uh, aerodynamics, you know, usually in a wind tunnel, very expensive to run. And also the car is stationary in those sort of environments, so you blow the air at the car. One thing that doesn't do is it doesn't allow the wheels to turn and therefore you don't get a true picture of what's actually happening to the airflow. been uh, pretty cool actually you know I wasn't sure what to expect but uh, it, it's a really impressive facility yeah it's been a really good day I think we've learned a lot um, a lot of correlative data that we wanted to get on the aero side there's no better place to put that into practice in Silverstone so uh, fingers crossed we can um, transfer it over to the track and have a really strong weekend This side seems closer and I'm small, so that's good. Oh, I feel like, you know the, um, you know Bugs Life? Yeah, don't look at the light. Don't look at the light, I can't help it. It's a bit bright for me after yesterday, it is, though. It is bright. Jesus. Oh, I suppose you were caving, weren't you? Mm. Yeah, tunnelling. How was your tunnelling? It was, yeah, interesting. Cool. Something I've never done before anyway, been in that, you know, all nice. like that, so. So what is it, how, how Two, long is 2. it? 2.7 kilometres. Jesus, that's, that's long enough. Right, it's, like, it's basically longer than longer than the track we're doing now. Yeah. In a straight line. In a straight line. Yeah. All underground. So where is it? About 20 minutes away. Oh sweet, it's close yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. And so how do they? I was gonna say, how do they monitor everything? Yeah. How do you? So you just, you just put got, little sensors. You just got to attach everything you can to the you've car. Got to do your yeah. own I mean, sensors. we I think we were mainly going off like the uh, sort of damper pots for how much downforce and also the uh, sort of yeah. Speed. So it's that smooth. You can do it all off damper pots. It's it's the same people that laid the tarmac here. Wow. So it's it is like. Super smooth. Fair play. Right, okay, so similar role to Thruxton, we've got championship to look at. So, Dan, apologies if you're going to get the call, but you may get a call at some point yep. to discuss the strategy. I'll try and keep it simple. First lap will pan out, how it pans out, and then if we get an opportunity to switch. Like Thruxton, we'll only do it where the gap's big enough so we don't compromise a position for you as well. So I'll we'll work out where we're going to do it, please. Yeah, we've had, we've had a few little chats, haven't we, about certainly from the towing side that we felt maybe into Brooklands would be the right, the right place because I can sort of leave the door open. Well, we'll, um, we'll work out a gap that we're comfortable with and I think the key is for us to communicate on the pit wall yeah. uh, with, the, with ourselves and with you guys. Um, so, but that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, Ash has got a real chance now, so I'll play the best role I can. Four minutes. It is race one of the day, it is round 25. We are almost good to go racing here at Silverstone. Colin Turkington, the championship leader, has work to do from 10. Drivers now look towards the lighting gantry. It's a good start by Butcher. It's a good start by Morgan. Not a great start by Ingram. And Morgan, look, comes up on the outside of Jake Hill. 
They go side by side into Cops Corner. Jake on the inside squeezes back through. And Zygrim's got track position and he's got the job done even before Laffield, right round the outside of the BMW. Fantastic move. Definitely the BMW struggling with cold tyres. That's what's held Hill back. He's had to defend. Tom Ingram knew that those BMWs were struggling and now he's hunting downhill. He'll try around the outside again using the tyre advantage. He can't pull it off this time. It's up the inside, a little bit of contact. I went for a move into Luffield, it just wasn't wasn't quite there. As he's come back in, I've tapped him into a big slide. But in trying to stay back from Jake to not gain an advantage, it just meant that there was a load of other cars that came in the mix. It's a little bit frustrating, and, and in that scenario, really quite dangerous because it's so difficult to know what to do. Ingram lines up the inside, and Jake Hill hangs on to the place. Morgan up the inside of Ingram, and Camish is in the mix as well. The race leader, Rory Butcher, 2.4 seconds ahead. But this gap is absolutely plummeting. It was over three seconds. Now it's 1.3. Jake Hill's another half a second gain. So he is reeling in, Rory Butcher. Look, Hill closes up under braking, nibbling almost at the back of the Toyota. Ingram is in front of Kamish, which means that Kamish has his teammate behind. So you might expect a switch of place here just to give Ash up a few more points. We'll do it on the last lap one way or another, either into Brooklands if he feels it's safe or out of Luffin. Interesting to see whether Kamish and Sutton swap positions on this last lap. I think they're doing it now in the background. They are indeed. There is a big gap on the inside. Ash Sutton goes through. Check and flag at the ready and Rory Butcher will win round 25 of the championship at Silverstone. Yes! Jake Hill takes second. Do you think the hybrid has changed the racing massively? Because I think I think it's changed how we all think about the racing. Yeah. And I think it's changed how the seasons then panned out as well. Because I think there's more, I'd say there's more drivers in the in the sort of the window to be able to win the championship than there probably has been before. It's like what is it like five of us at the yeah. minute, give or take, that can win it. But I don't remember, ever remember it being that close before. The big difference is with the hybrid now is that qualify it's a qualifying game because yeah, the cars that are quick in qualifying remain quick all weekend. Mm. With the weight, the weight used to drop them off so much during a race weekend, or it could do, mm. and you have to re-engineer the car, which is the other thing. I think from someone who's been sort of trying to play catch-up, what it's revealed to me is that you really can't. You know, the, the, the start of the season I had, I should have gone to the next few rounds with zero weight yeah, in the flying. old game, absolutely flying. Yeah. Pole, win, yeah, win exactly catch-up. Yeah, but yeah, now, yeah. unfortunately, you just, you can't do that, yeah, you know. Yeah, we've struggled at times to even qualify in the top five or six, and the same guys, yourselves included. If you're the fast, if you're the fast guys in the championship, you're still up there now. But then there's maybe an argument that it has it has made it, it has made it better now because you've got at this stage of the season, say four people all within 25 points. I think, of the I think it just highlights that you've got to get off to a good start. When I um, had a good year a few years ago, I played massive catch up and then nearly pinched it at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I think now you have to start well and then you can sustain that. Yeah, I don't think not. you can do this sort of yo -yo drop back and yo-yo. Yeah, that's exactly right. right. Well done, Jake. Congratulations. Welcome to the second step of the podium and gets the award and a hand And a big podium and first win this year for Rory Butcher. And that is our podium presentation for round 25. Welcome to my restoration project of a house. What you see is what you get, basically. Um, this is probably the worst room in the house. Hannah, my fiance, is here. She's got her, um, her little office set up for now. Um, it's very, very temporary. She said yes in uh, January, which is helpful. Um, so, yeah, we are getting married at the moment in 2025, so a little bit away uh, simply because of dates for British touring cars. So, welcome upstairs. This is definitely my boy's den, um, full of <laughs> all my Tamiya RC car collection, Scarlet Strick, which is obviously a very proud sponsor of mine, PS5 and all my podium hats and some of my trophies. So just my little space just to kick back, um, relax, enjoy, just being a kid basically. You know, it's no secret, I love all my, you know, RC stuff and Scarlet Strick and everything. So yeah, just having a bit of time to yourself and my little breathing space. Keeps me away from all the stresses and strains from touring cars, that's for sure. Being in the British Touring Car Championship is stressful. There's no two ways about it. You have an awful lot of guests to look after, a lot of people to please, and obviously you've got to do the job in the car as well so that you know it can all continue year after year. Every year is touch and go whether, you know, whether you're gonna do it again. 16, 17, 18 were hard um, just because you really doubt yourself as a driver. 
when the car's not where it needs to be and the resources aren't there. But when you've been very successful in championships before, you join touring cars, and then all of a sudden you're you know, P15 and backwards all the time, you do start to doubt yourself whether you're actually any good. You know, you never know what can happen. You know, anything, can, it can change in an instant. So you've got to be so grateful for what you've got at the time that you've got it. 2019 was definitely the turnaround year that really made me enjoy going racing again. It's a bit dusty, but a little montage that Dad got me for Christmas uh, 2019 of our return, basically, with AMD and the little Audi. First win, knock ill, first podium, brands. Uh, the heat, I remember that, I was literally dying uh, at Alton Park qualifying and obviously me and MB, the boss, and look how far we've come. We are set to go, Rory Butcher is on pole position for this second race at Silverstone with Jake Hill winning at the front of the grid. Light to go out, slow start by Jake Hill, good start by Adam Morgan. Slow start by Ingram, good start by the Napa Racing Fords as well as they swap him. Jake Hill is on the attack, Adam Morgan tries to defend as they go through maggots for the first time. That's right, come on Jake. Oh, and that was Adam Morgan getting into the back of Ash Sutton, he's done a little bit of damage. Might want to think about that, because it would suit them today. That, that little bit of hesitation and wheel spin really suffered for Ingram, both the Napa Racing cars getting through on him. Brad, can you check front end damage on pit wall, did you hear that? Yeah, Brad's just going to the pit wall to have a look. Again, Ingram up the back of Sutton. Big dive round the outside, Ingram on Morgan, he's going to do it, but he's going to run a little bit wide, they're still together, but Ingram will have the line into Luffield. That car is flying. Great job, mate. Current fastest slot, 57.8. Now, leaders go through. Margin between them is almost irrelevant. You can see how close it is. Hill's gone wide to try and cut back and get a mega exit onto the start of the lap. He cuts underneath. Is this the moment that Hill takes the lead? I think he has. Beautifully done by Hill. He's going to have to brave it out all the way down to Cox. Butcher tries, but Hill's quick enough. Yes! Come on! Well played. Jake Hill absolutely disappearing up the road. He is over a second to the good. That's not good. There's Ingram taking his inside line. Can he get up the inside of Sun? Oh. Just gets his nose back across the front of Ingram. I quite enjoy that focused attention that starts to come into the final. That little bit of a right starting to put a bit of a plan together. Where can we get even more? Where can we do that? How does that? That's why we do it, isn't it? Yeah, it is that. It's that the competition and, and being the best of, on the day or the best of the year is what we all strive to be. Yeah. Yeah. Checkered flag at the ready. Jake Hill wins at Silverstone. Yes, come on! <laughs> I said this to, to friends at the time, it's like, if I wanted to have a bit of fun, I would go down my local car track with my yeah, mates, yeah. that's fun. But the yeah. second someone takes a stop clock out, that's now, this is uh, <laughs> this is change. And yeah. then the enjoyment comes from the competition yeah. and that lifting yourself to have that, that weekend, that moment, that pull up yeah. that other people couldn't achieve. Yeah, exactly that. You can just imagine Craig, can't you? Sat in the hospital. Laptop open, yeah. <laughs> screaming. Uh, Craig wasn't at Silverston uh, because he um, got ill and basically he's having to be looked after and um, uh, kept under surveillance, I guess. Yeah, having some um, blood tests. Yeah, blood tests, you know, almost every day at the moment. He was definitely still working as hard <laughs> as ever, though. Um, I think he was wondering what the doctors were thinking because he had three laptops up. Uh, on his bed, he had his engineering one, ITV4 on the go, um, and, and, and you then know, the timing screen, the timing another. screen <laughs> and another one. So, uh, my dad, Alex from MB, and Sean Hollandby, we all thought it'd be a good idea that he got the winner's trophy from race two. So, they kindly dropped that into him on the way back uh, into hospital, and yeah, I think he was very appreciative of that. Right, we're looking forward then to another lively race three and Jake Hill as the race one winner starts eighth on the reverse group draw. We've got a championship situation to think about. This promises to have everything going on. So the grid is formed. We are just about good to go. Lights out, it's blast off. Good getaway by Cook. Good getaway also by Dan Kamish. Dan up the inside, gets into the back of Cook, knocks him sideways. Kamish makes a better start. Cook comes across. There's contact initially. Right. He won't look at where he was going, was he? Kamish dropping back. Kamish has got a problem. 
Morocco and thing. Morgan into the back of Cook. Cook just saves him, but through comes in. Oh, More drama that's gone to shed and sideways. He gets into the back of Jake Hill. Jake Hill survived a very anxious moment then. That's not nice. Don't like that. Ingram leads the way. He said pre-race he wanted big points. When he's in the lead, it's going the right way for him. And Ollie Jackson getting his elbows out. He's side by side with Hill. Up towards Beckett's now. Camish up the curve. Cook breaks late. He's got the inside line. The road comes back to him. But Camish stands his ground on the outside line. He's not giving up. Oh, Camish is on the inside into Brooklyn. So Camish goes through and Cook can't stay alongside to retaliate. Look at this, side by side, Jake Hill on the attack, gets up the inside of Oli Jackson, Gordon Shen right there behind. Shen into the back of Hill, is he coming into the corner? They've both got past Jackson, Hill does go wide, but he hangs on to the place, good recovery. Certainly got rear floor damage. And a challenge made there because diving up the inside of Jake Hill goes Tom Chilton. That's to try and hang on to his sixth place, in fact, but Jake Hill goes round the outside of him. Hill goes through, gains another spot, good move. Looks straight away, he's on the tail of Josh Cook here. And as they come off Luffield, he's going to try to dive to the inside into Woodcut. And there the BMW just breezes up alongside and Jake Hill serenely motors through. I don't want to be in the hospital, Wood. Nah. <laughs> yeah, everyone's watching it. Everyone's yeah, watching they're, it. They're, they're for arms, the next target is Dan Camish, who is not going to be cooperative because he needs to protect Ash Sutton. They're both on the hybrid. Now, will this be round the outside from Hill? He's going to try and go all the way round the outside. He's done it. Jake Hill's driven fantastically this weekend, hasn't he? A second and a first, and he's on for a fourth now. Fourth place will be a good haul of points, and it will be a hugely vital game towards the Brands Hatch in two weeks' time. Tom Ingram makes his way up towards the timing line for a career 23rd win, wins race three at Silverstone. Tom Ingram wins, Ash Sutton second, Rory Butcher third, Jake Hill fourth, Dan Camish fifth. You can see the uh, delight in his face, even under the crash helmet, that keeps him in the mix going to Brands Hatch. Yeah, good. Very, very good. Brilliant weekend. Shame we couldn't get a podium for the last race, but we'll take fourth. That's, uh, yeah, mega. Five points into Brands. Uh, we were 23 coming in, five points now, so yeah, mega. So this is my 1992 R32 GTR. Ta-da! It's my baby. Well, we took it to Goodwood for the revival. For Goodwood, you need something that's 60s, really, but yeah, unfortunately, 1992 would have to do. It doesn't serve a purpose. It's not a daily driver. It's my pride and joy, you know, it's simple as that. Yeah, I always wanted one, you know, and yes, you could have a lot more for what this is worth now, but this is just such a different feeling, you know, it's old school turbos. It's the 90s, man, it's what it was, you know, it's cool. It's literally what a PlayStation game was back then. You know, at the start of the year, media day comes around, it's an exciting time. It was an exciting time for me, and starting with a new team, with a team that I dreamt of driving for, you know, for, for a very long time, to drive for BMW and West Surrey Racing. So I think this year with WSR and with MB, like MB we've worked with for a number of years and like they've kind of always felt like family. And I think this last year with WSR, the kind of racing family has extended. You never know how well you're going to integrate into a new team and into a new car. So the challenges of that have been challenging and the first half of the year was a bit messy from my side. but. The second half of the year has been fantastic and I feel like I've really you know, got my head around it. So yeah, I hoped I would be near the front and obviously challenging for wins and challenging for the title. And yeah, I'm very thankful that those sort of dreams have come true. I think it's everything that I've ever wanted for Jake. I've seen it, his dream, what he's worked for for so long, for so many years. I kind of can't believe we're at this point now where he's within a chance, a really good chance of winning and to win it would mean even more because it's kind of like that final piece of the puzzle that kind of then fits into place. Mm. I've never won a championship ever in anything. Um, I've come close quite a few times but it would just be a lifetime goal achieved. It would be awesome for me or Tom because it would be our first championship. If Tom won it I'd still be pleased for him because I know how hard he's worked and I'm sure it would be vice versa. No, not really. <laughs> but, um, you know, yeah, it's true. Obviously it's the chance you've got as well because next year it's mine anyway. So. <laughs>